All right, hello everybody. Today we are um, beginning again with JavaScript this morning. I hope you're doing well. Um, before we started, uh, for all the people that are uh, with us uh, through W3Develops, I'd encourage you to um, join uh, the W3Develops LinkedIn. And you can do that by adding um, yourself as a member of the team. So I created a position of developer intern. When I first started, I met John in uh, mid to late December. And we just participated in an e-learning session where we just learned the basics of HTML, CSS. And since then, uh, you know, we've learned uh, things by contributing to group projects. And um, I've been, assisting him with the social media presence for W3 develops. So that was, you know, quote unquote, a, an internship for me. And since then I've gone on to uh, become a junior web developer and community manager. And um, that's just been my role as, you know, just a, a volunteer facilitator. And um, I just helped to organize the groups and I've just contributed to um, uh, some side projects, you know, for creating websites and things like that. And um, so that's been a, a position I've had with W3 Develops. And, um, you know, if you've gotten this far, then you've been pretty involved with us. And especially if you're in the Discord and engage with our community, I'd invite you to come be a part of the W3 Develops team. And uh, this will add um, experience to your resume that can help you get a job. Um, I've actually um, uh, just gotten some uh, considerable attention. Uh, I may have an announcement pretty soon, but um, this experience that I've gotten through W3 Develops has really helped me to um, to show people that I'm involved in web development and um, and I added myself to the team and all of these people are people that have been involved with us as well. Uh, you know, some of you guys have gotten to know Tamari and this is DK, Jamia, and um, there's Pat uh, and Adam is another guy. And obviously, um, if we scroll down, you'd see John somewhere. Yeah, there's John. But um, I don't know all of these people that well, but um, uh, they have popped in from time to time. But um, I would encourage you to, at minimum at this point, add yourself as an intern. Um, and then uh, just continue to work with us and be involved. And then hopefully, uh, we can invite you guys to become community managers if you're heavily involved and uh, you're taking ownership of the community. But um, something like this will really help you with your resume and it would give you um, a chance to uh, break into tech by showing that you've been engaged and working and you've gotten experience just through learning. Uh, but that you're you're doing more than just the average person who's uh, going at this alone. You've been a part of a team, and and then also your GitHub will reflect that that you've been committing and you've been working with um, others through group projects. Um, but uh, I didn't want to uh, just overlook that, and I thought that would be important for everybody that's been involved with us thus far. Um, but uh, did you guys have any questions about that? Yeah, but is it like we can <clears throat> give uh, some kind of position by ourselves? Or is it, for example, now I'm following W3 Develops now I'm from my LinkedIn account? I can't be just yeah. So I I'm going to give a. <laughs> Why can't we do the whole thing finish? I say, in the in the sky. Yeah, you can. Um, hey Jamal, I'm gonna mute you. Yeah, sorry. Um, 
Yeah. Um, I would say go ahead and give yourself an intern role. And then um, once we finish one of these classes, then, um, you know, you know, maybe like at the beginning of next month, add, add yourself another role, but just continue to show up with us. And then um, that'll, um, you know, it's not like anybody's going to like double check on you. It's not like I'm your dad and I'm going to like get on to you if you abuse this. But um, I would encourage you to be involved um, that way, you know, uh, you can place everybody that's a community manager. You can place them down as a reference. And, um, you know, it's legitimate in the sense that we're really doing what we're saying we're doing. Uh, we're not just making stuff up, you know. Yeah. But, um, because if anybody starts, like, making stuff up and fabricating stuff, then it just it, it just removes the legitimacy of what we're doing because we are actually approaching this like it's kind of like a part-time job. Like the amount of hours we put into this, it's, uh, you know, it's time we've spent for free uh, to learn, but, um, but we've also just, um, you know, been spending this time to grow and to learn. So, um, yeah, but just let me know if you have any questions. But I would invite everybody if you've if you've gotten this far, um, then uh, I would say go ahead and um, and do that. But anyhow, I won't delay anymore. Oh, let's hop back into the basic JavaScript. Okay. All right. So we're back into uh, basic JavaScript, use conditional logic with if statements. And uh, if statements are used to make decisions in code, the keyword if tells JavaScript to execute the code in the curly braces under certain conditions defined in the parenthesis. These conditions are known as Boolean conditions and they may only be true or false. When the condition evaluates to true, the program executes the statement inside the curly braces. When the Boolean condition evaluates to false, the statement inside the curly braces will not execute. Pseudocode. So this is if a condition is true, so the condition is always given in the parens, then curly brace, this is what will be executed in this statement inside the curly braces. So here's an example. Um, there's a function test with the conditions of my condition. And then it says if my condition then return it was true. And lastly it says return it was false. If it wasn't if it wasn't true so it's always operating from top to bottom. If it if it's true, then it, it would have already output this, and then the code would have ended. But if the condition is false, then it will automatically skip this step and come to it was false. When test is called with a value of true, the if statement evaluates my condition to see if it is true or not. Since it is true, the function returns it was true. When we call test with a value of false, my condition is not true and the statement in the curly braces is not executed and the, condition, the, the function returns it was false. Create an if statement inside the function to return yes, that was true if the parameter was that true is true and return no that was false otherwise okay all right so we're inside the curly braces now we can create our if statement if um so they want us to say was that true <coughs> 
is true. Wait. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't have to do anything. We just say curly braces. And it's understood that the first, um, yeah, every time. the first, um, yeah, item or whatever we call this inside the curly braces is automatically the true statement. Yeah. So return, uh, yes. That was true. That was true. And semicolon. And then outside of the curly braces at this point is automatically <coughs> the, the false statement. So whatever is false, it would return no, that was false. And so we don't say uh, else or something, right? Not at this point. Um, okay. You know, it's going to get more complex. And yeah, eventually we will. But um, so the second return will never be executed, right? As long as the first one true. is true. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, it, it won't be. Uh, let's let's test it. Um, so yeah, because inside our um, the argument of the you know this is the parameter, and then yeah, if you send true, we'll, then say, we'll say either true or false. And uh, inside of here, in that in that case, that would be yes, that's true. Yeah, that was true. But then yeah. if we say false then it'll say, no, that was no. false. Yeah. But if we say anything else, like gobbledygook, whatever, it won't run anything because we didn't tell it as a default to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the if statement like that, um, was that true? So by default, is that true or false? What's the value of that? Uh, uh, by default. No. Was that true? It has, to, it, has to either, it has to be a boolean. Yeah, it depends. So how how we check, how we check is it true or false? Because you are passing when you call the function, you are passing a boolean. Uh, yeah, you have to say either true or false um, for it to work. At this mm -hmm. point, there's there's no default false answer. Yeah, but what did we check whether it's true or false? The one that you pass it. For example, yeah. now he. He, he, he sent false, then was that true? Will be false. Yeah, there's no default, but they're going to uh -huh. get to that in the next lesson. Like, see, like if I just said, uh, uh, I think even if I, I, I wrote I wrote it like <clears throat> this, it would mm. say, No, it is true. Oh, yes. so this gets into truthies and falsies, though. Because this is yes. just, you know, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a truthy. Yeah, because yeah. this is true. But a null. <laughs> Uh, null would be false, right? Yes, yes, and then, yeah. So there's a list of and falsies undefined, like I have this in the undefined, also. Yeah, let me pull out my list of truthies and falsies. This is a good practice, though. And I don't think this is really something that they cover. Um, where was that? Truthies and falsies. Ah, here it is. Okay. So, yeah. So a number, yeah. which is important though, because a number would be declared true. Um, but a negative zero would be considered false, and a zero would be considered false. But any other number is true. Even a negative number is true. Um, any text is true. So even if I said false, it would be true. Um, there's even the keyword infinity. If I said infinity, then it would do nothing. <laughs> Um, maybe I have to capitalize it. Yeah, infinity. No, it doesn't recognize infinity. It um, will because you miss one one closing. You miss a closing. 
Infinity. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, and then you add one closing parenthesis. Okay. It must not recognize infinity here. No, no, it's it's it is it's I mean you have no error that to add one closing parenthesis. Yeah. No parenthesis, not bracket, parenthesis, parenthesis. For the infinity? No, no, no. For even for the console log, there is missing one closing parenthesis. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, now you put infinity. Now let's see. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, good catch. Yeah, so infinity is true. Negative. Yeah, what about infinity yeah. is true? I have the I have the list of them right here, like on this little cheat sheet. See. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading them off, but it's like uh, it's what something. What about n? Not n number. <laughs> this is something that I was specifically asked about in my mock interview that I had with my mentor. So I'm going over this, but he said this was important to understand in Boolean what um, what would be considered truth, true and false because um, you know it's not it's not uh, always clear until you you know you do this stuff. But not yeah. a number is not is a false. Yes. So whenever it returns not a number, it's going to be false. Null is false. Yeah. And undefined. Undefined yeah. is false. Yeah. But there's a limited number of, of answers that are false, but there's a whole lot more that are true. Yeah, almost everything apart almost from those. Everything else is true except yeah. for false yeah. and zero, negative zero. And empty string. <laughs> uh yeah yeah you're right an, <laughs> an, an empty string is false you're right because yeah. it would be the same thing as null yeah and then uh undefined is false <coughs> and uh the other one is not a number that's false also but the rest of the answers would be true so even this is going to be true even though it's counterintuitive but that's where I guess you just have to be mindful of, you know, what yeah. is considered true and what is considered false. Yes. But anyway, I kind of digressed, but um, yeah. So even this is false because it's empty. Mm -hmm. But an empty object would be true. So any kind of object is going to make it true even if it's an empty object. What about array, empty array? An array, it would be true. true. Yeah. Yeah, but mm -hmm. he was emphasizing that this was something that you need to know. Okay. Um, but I think John posted this cheat sheet. Um, I highly recommend it. This cheat sheet and that GitHub cheat sheet are like, are really good resources to have. I have another one, I have a CSS cheat sheet too, but uh, it's a little less to look up, you know, if you've got it there and you just have it on the, on the cheat sheet, you know, and then eventually I think, you know, you get to the point where you need the cheat sheet less, but um, you know, if you've forgotten something on a whim, you know, you can just look at the cheat sheet and think, okay, this is what I need to know. But anyhow, let's pass this on and go to the next one. <coughs> All right, comparison with the equality operator. There are many comparison operators in JavaScript. All of these operators return a Boolean true or false value. The most basic operator is the equality operator, which is a double equal sign. The equality operator compares two values and returns true if they're equivalent or false if they are not. Note that equality is different from assignment, which is a single equal sign. 
which assigns the value at the right of the operator to a variable in the left. Right, so we've got an example um, function equality test and the parameter is my val. If my val equality operator, so if it's equal to 10, then return equal. Um, and then return not equal otherwise. Um, but the equality operator is kind of unique. I think it's going to get into this at this point. If my val is equal to 10, the equality, uh, did somebody say something? Okay, yeah, I got you, Misfin. So, yeah, at like six, it's about six o'clock now, so about 6.15 or 6.20ish for me. Okay, all right, if my val is equal to 10, the equality operator returns true. So the code in the curly braces will execute and the function will return equal. Otherwise, the function will return not equal. In order for JavaScript to compare two different data types, for example, numbers and strings, it must convert one type to another. This is known as type coercion. Once it does, however, it can compare types or can com it can compare terms as follows. Okay. <sighs> All right, so one, one the number and one the number are true because they're the same. One and the number two are not the same. Uh, one and the string one are actually true, but we'll see in the next uh, operator. The coercion up in here. Yeah. Coercion. This is the coercion, yeah, which it seems really counterintuitive, but the next operator will explain why this is. Um, but uh, it's basically comparing it uh, to, you know, what is the raw information, irregardless, uh, regardless of whether or not it's a string or a number by type. Uh, it's just the content of what it is. Yeah, Elliot, what is it doing when you do like one is equal to string one? Which is coarser to which? Like, is. is uh, one? We'll find this out. Um, yeah. Let's do. Like, if you take this to a uh, console, for example. Let me add this in so that it will. Add the equality operator to the indicated line. Okay. Okay, so val value equals 12. Okay, so this one's gonna return not equal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so let's console log. Actually, let's do this, let's do yeah, let's just console log. Console log. And then, oh, I misspelled console, whoops. Okay, so that one's gonna be not equal. But if I set this up to uh, 12, then it's gonna say equal. Okay. And even if I set it up to 12 in the string. 12 yeah. as a string, then it's going to say equal. So, um, so the number. Let's say the console log of 12. Let's say uh, type you, of. You want an example, yeah. I think I think this one will do it. Yeah, it's a string. Okay. Yeah. So it's saying it's saying that it's a string. 
But if yeah, I say that this is a number, then it's going to say number. Oh no, it's still saying string. It's still saying string. Oh, because it's saying what the output is, is a string. Yeah, it's the returning value. Ah, the return value is a string. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sure. I'm not sure. I think you'd have to depend on what value is. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how to access that. Though. Yeah, I think. Val? I, <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. It may not do anything. Yeah, it's just not going to understand that. Undefined, because you have to give it some kind of definition by passing it through. Wow. I'm not sure how to get it to tell us what it what it is at the operator point, but yeah. Anyhow, the main point is that twelve string and 12 number by the equality operator are the, are true. Yes. But, yeah. So is it like that number 12 now change it into a string or the string 12 is converted into 12 numbers? Uh, for example, um, <coughs> I think, I think the word, uh, the, the 12 number I think is converted to a string if it's, if it's comparing with the string. But don't quote me on that. I, I could be totally wrong, but I'm not sure how to check for that. I suppose. Hmm. I suppose I could do this. Um, value or var value equals uh, say. Okay, now let me see what that does. It says console log value. And it should say, mm -hmm. this is syntax error. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to get it to do that then. I've missed something. Actually, you cannot do like that in a, an object. You can, an object is key value pair, so it's, okay. you cannot do an assignment on a, an object. Yeah, it's gotta be like this. Yeah, then totally disregard what I just did here. This is not a, this is me just toying around. Oh, not that. That needs to be that. But, <clears throat> but we can, we can do something. 12. Uh, can I? Yeah, you wanna share your screen and try? Yeah, let, let me share and then. Okay. Let me see if I can get this to work. <clears throat> One second, let me get rid of that. Okay, now that's yeah, working. Yeah, I will see. I'm just run the test. Okay. But anyhow, I'll stop sharing and you, yeah. you try something. Yeah. Um, what I wanted. Oh, Kara's here. I didn't notice you dropped uh, in. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> uh, can you see? Yeah, I can the see. screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's say that uh, we have an object OBJ. <coughs> it has <coughs> STR, which is which is number twelve, and um, num one num, which is twelve. For example, if we say that uh -huh. type yeah. of there you go. Yeah, so if I console dot log uh, this type of type of uh, obj uh, dot str, what 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 will it give this one? It'll be string. It'll be string. Yeah, it should be string. That's good. Seven. And the same thing that should be okay. a number, right? Mm -hmm. If I say num. So uh so this would be a number. So now uh what if <clears throat> uh we want to equate like for example uh the the string uh, to obj dot num <coughs> this will give true right yeah <coughs> like caution yeah it it is it gave true it's saying true true um even if you exchange the the place like uh, in here num and here str so in both cases it should give us true but now <laughs> now it's is obj str when we say obj str is equals to obj num first this means that uh, the string 12 is equals to 12. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, to me, uh, when we say that the string 12 is equals to 12, it means that first the string will be changed to number. This will be coursed to 12. Yeah. 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 This yeah. will, the, sorry. This will be the first. The first well, one will be converse to the second one. Yes, the type of the is, second one. Yes, when we say obj uh, twelve is equals to the string twelve. In this case, the twelve, this one will be converted to string twelve. <clears throat> this is what we are doing. Yeah. This is what I'm understanding. In the first case, both will be number. In the second case, we are comparing string to string. That's what it gives true. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's good to explain it. Because um, it's not uh, something you'd really understand, but. I'm glad you did that because I struggle in how to explain that, but I appreciate that because it helps me understand in terms of the uh, attributes within uh, an object. If you uh, provide, you know, the attributes or the pro there's properties through string and um, then you're like storing those values within the object. And then comparing them. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So is it like uh, 
anything who, which comes first, <clears throat> always the one we, we change into the second one. Like JavaScript will check that when it see like uh, when when you are comparing twelve is equal to twelve, uh, it will check like if the this, the first one is string and the second one is number. So it basically in, in variable if you remember in variable like const if you say const a is equal to five means that you will have a, a placeholder five and then this the right hand whatever this value is the a value will depend whatever the right side like, yeah so if this is, if this is like in string the a value will be string yeah so when i say when we say that obj is string to number the first that's uh, what we are assigning kind of assigning this number the string will force it to change to number. In that case, it would be, we are comparing number to number. Yeah. And in the second case, the right side is 12, that is in a string, you will force the number to change to string. It will give you string to string. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's good, safe to make, Triple equality. <laughs> no yeah. portion. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and go to the next lesson. Do you still have time, Mesfin, to do the next one? Uh, let me see. Yeah, I have 10 minutes. Okay, let's look at the next one, uh, Jamal. You, you can go ahead and read it uh, since you're already sharing. Okay, okay. okay let me know. It was in the in JavaScript, JavaScript. We went pretty good now. Uh, was it logical? Uh, <laughs> let's see. No, we're at the... Uh... We're above if, that. Uh, we're above. We're above. Up, up, up. Oh, we were in the if. Okay. Yeah, we're at the comparison with the strict ah, equality operator. Okay, so we go strict. We are not in strict, right? Yeah, we're in. We're in that one. Click, okay. Click, click uh, strict yeah, equality. Yeah. So in strict equality, comparison with strict equality operator, strict equalities three equals three equal signs is the counterpart to the equality operator double equal sign. however unlike the equality operator which attempts to convert both values being compared to a common type the strict equality operator doesn't perform any type conversion if the value being compared have different types they are considered unequal and the strict equality operator will return false. Three is equal to three is true and three is equal to two. string three is false. In the second example, <coughs> three is a number type and string three is a string type. Use the string equality operator in the if statement. So the function will return equal when value is strictly equal to seven. So when value is strictly equal to seven. So if we console back. So not equal. Okay, if we pass seven, then it's equal. Okay, I think this is straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I would consider something. <laughs> uh, practice, <laughs> practice comparing different values. <coughs> In the last two challenges, 
we learned about the equality operator and strictly equality operator. Let's do a quick review and practice using these operators some more. If the value being compared are not of the same type, the equality operator will perform a type conversion and, and then evaluate the values. However, the strict equality operator will compare both the data type and value as is without converting one type to another. Example, three is equal to string three returns true because JavaScript performs type conversion. Ah, that's good. Here we go. From string to number. <laughs> we got the answer. Returns to the Yeah, from the right side to the left side. From string, it will change from string <coughs> to number. What is it? Whatever, whatever is the right side is the one that makes force it to be changed, right? Maybe this is the other way around, I don't know. <laughs> but here they give us the number, the answer. <clears throat> so in strict equality, you don't care. Just if they are not the same, then it will throw. So from string to number means both numbers become a string now, is it? Uh, from string to number, like the right side is string, then, uh, that's the okay. one that's going to be changed to number. From string to number. So yeah. all of them become number now? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, in JavaScript, you can determine the type <coughs> of a variable or a value with the type of operator. Type of three will give you number, type of three will give you a string. Two, okay, the comparison, the compare equality function in the editor compares two value using the equality operator. Modify the function so that it returns equal. Only when the value are strictly equal. So it's pretty much forward, straightforward, just add one equal and it will give strict equality <clears throat> uh you want to add something more on this issue about strict equality and no i think i think it's fine uh, what about the other guys ul if you say if you can say something yeah i haven't had okay yeah. Um, um, what was that? Uh, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, IOL was saying something. Uh, I just said that uh, it's clear, so we can. Okay. Okay. We can move on. Okay. Uh, comparison with the inequality operator. The inequality operator is the opposite of the equality operator. It means not equal and returns false where equality will return to and vice versa. Like the equality operator, the inequality operator will, will convert data types of value while comparing. So one is equal to two is true, not equal to two is true, and one not equal to string one will get false because there is string coursing is still applied. One not equal to one is false, and one is not equal to two is false. Zero is not equal to false is false. So add the inequality operator in the if statement so that the function will return not equal when the value is not equal to 99. So when the value is not equal to 99, Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so function test equality to take value and then if it's not equal to 99, not equal, otherwise it's equal. Comparison with strict inequality operator, it 
it's the mud before it doesn't it doesn't consider the coercion the strict equality is the logical opposite of the strict equality operator it means strict not equal and returns force where strict equality would return to and vice versa strictly strict inequality will not convert data type so three not strictly not equal to three that's false three strictly not equal to string three that's true four not strictly equal to three that's true add the strict inequality operator to the if statement so that the function will return not equal and the value is not strictly equal to 17. okay 17 not equal otherwise return okay Parallelism with the greater than or equals to and greater than operator. <coughs> the greater than operator compares the value of two numbers. If the number to the left is greater than the number to the right, it returns to otherwise it returns false. Like the equality operator, greater than operator will convert data type of values while comparing. 5 greater than 3 is true. Okay. 3 3 is true because string 3 will be changed to number 3. 2 greater than 3 false. String 1 greater than 9 false. 1 will be replaced with number 1. <clears throat> Add greater than operator to the indicated line so that the return statement makes sense okay we have test greater than this value if value <coughs> is greater than 100 okay yeah. if value is <clears throat> greater than 10 <coughs> it will be over 10 else under 10 yeah okay you want to add something in this case okay i'll go out now and then i'll come back after 20 minutes okay yeah yeah <coughs> Elliot, also. Yes. Yeah. You wanna say something? <clears throat> or... Yeah, I, we can just call it a day and uh, everybody just uh, continue to do studying on your own and um, yeah. uh, for the remainder of the day. Um, sure. And. Um, if you're going through React with us, then um, take a look at uh, making something from scratch, uh, putting everything together that we've already done so far and try to build something that is independent of the tutorial where you're thinking outside of the box. Uh, yeah. But uh, if you're working within this, uh, within JavaScript, then, um, Let's say um, yeah, we won't do a project yet in JavaScript, but start thinking through uh, something that you can do for a project uh, because uh, I feel like we've learned a lot, but we haven't built anything with this yet. So start thinking through how you can um, create something outside of the tutorials that would help you learn so that um, we're not just mindlessly going through these tutorials, um, you know, because that's, at the end of the day, that's, um, 
not going to get us where we want to go if we're just um, participating in tutorials, but we're not putting it into something immediately. Um, so um, everybody start thinking through that. And then if you have an idea for a project that we can all try individually, and then um, I want like an, an entire day, uh, day study hours to be committed to building for that project. And then um, every, say every 15 minutes, we kind of check in with how we progressed or something like that. Um, we, we've done that before in, uh, we did that with HTML and CSS. We would, you know, have project days where we just uh, try to do the projects. And then maybe we'd have like two or three projects for that day. And then everybody would, you know, take 15 to 30 minutes. And then we would, um, you know, if somebody was stuck, then they would, you know, ask for help and pair a program with somebody. But um, if, uh, if nobody needed help and you were just kind of good on your own, then we would just take those days to kind of like check in with each other every 15 minutes on how we were doing with our projects. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, I'll try to look through the curriculum and see what, what would be a day when we can do that. But, um, for now, I think that's good. Um, if you're watching the YouTube video, uh, start posting uh, projects into the YouTube or, uh, if you're also with us in the discord channel, which I highly recommend that if you go to the description, there's a link to the discord channel, <coughs> pop in there and uh, join us in the community chat. And we also have a channel for this class in the study group. Um, if it's not been too long since this video has been recorded, but, um, anyhow, um, thanks for joining us today and, uh, happy coding to everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> and I will end the recording. One moment. Oh, it's, um, <laughs> one moment. Okay. All right. Happy coding everybody.